It's the battle for London and the South East, and our two top-scoring chefs, Avi and Robbie, are competing for a place in the national finals. They'll need to bring their dishes to life with fantastic flavour and big characters, from Mr Bean to the Gruffalo, from Winnie the Pooh to Paddington. If it's not top draw, it won't get the top score. So, Rasta Mouse, it's your region this week. Is there anyone in particular you've got your eye on? Hmm. Interesting. London and the South East saw four incredible chefs cook their hearts out for a place in the final two. Rock and roll. Through to cook for the judges today is the inventive chef patron at Only Food and Courses in central London, returner Robbie Lorraine. So I just need to bring my A-game today up the levels. Calm and collected head chef at London's Pali Hill, newcomer Avi Shashidara. I am confident about my food, so I'm going to give it my best shot. Today's winner goes through to the finals with a chance of getting to our banquet. <laughs> Inspired by British animation and illustration, their food includes odes to the Gruffalo, fantastic Mr Fox and Alice in Wonderland. They are phenomenal. They're not. I think this is completely bang <laughs> banquet worthy. But which chef will impress our judges in this, the toughest of chefs' competitions? The winner for London and the South East is... Hundred percent, I want to win. I want to get one of my dishes to the banquet. So yeah, I'm going to give it everything. It'd be a great achievement for me to represent London in the southeast in the final. I call London home, so I'm really excited about it. So Avi, judging day. Lots to do, Robbie. Let's get cooking. Let's go. Good night, buddy. Hello, chefs. Good morning. Wow. Good morning. Yes, I've gone full sequence yes, <laughs> for judging day. Looks wicked, looks wicked. <laughs> so you remember today, it's a completely clean slate. You have four brand new palettes to impress. Yeah. How do you feel? Very excited. Ready for action? Yes. You've both got some excellent dishes. You're both packed full of talent, so you can't really afford to put a tiny little step wrong. So I would suggest that you get your first jobs on right now. Wishing you both loads of luck. Thank All right. You. Thank you, Andy. With all six dishes to serve to the judges, the chefs get ahead with the most time-consuming jobs. I've got to make a, a few doughs, I've got to make some garnishes, I've got to make some crackers, so I'm just uh, getting on with it. Avi starts with the dough for his Mangalore buns canapé as it needs time to rest. Aye, aye, here we go, come on whilst Robbie is preparing golden beetroot for his main course. Really busy right now, loads to do, steaming into it. I've done the sheets now, beetroot, I'm just tying them so that they stay intact, and then I'll finish them off in the vinegar, ready for the beef fat later. Then it's on to the crab sauce, also for Avi's canapé. He's preparing a crab-free celeriac version for Tom due to his shellfish allergy. It's going to have a similar texture, just like white crab meat. Robbie is also replacing the shellfish in his canapé with confit celeriac. How are you feeling about cooking for Tom Kerridge? Does that intimidate you? Yeah, I mean, a little bit intimidating. Tom Kerridge knows his food, is looking for perfection. Yeah. So we can't afford to make any mistakes today. Absolutely. I hope I've got all of mine out of my system. Yeah. Maybe you might make some today. <laughs> With a total of three Michelin stars under his belt, Tom Kerridge won't be easy to impress. And having taken his main course to the banquet twice, he knows what it feels like to compete in this competition. I remember those times competing in that kitchen and those nerves, they really can get hold of you. Particularly now with two chefs that have not got through to judging chamber before, it may well be a heavy weight on their shoulders. The chefs concentrate on creating a good first impression with their canapes. Avi shapes and deep fries the dough for his Mangalore buns. Whilst Robbie makes a start on the main element of his dish, scallops. It seemed like it was a bit of a struggle to eat in one bite, so I'm just reducing the side slightly. You're looking good. 
Hello, love. Glitzy outfit today. <laughs> yes. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How's your week been? Interesting, interesting. Okay. I think it took the chefs a minute to settle into the kitchen. They're not that used to being in competition. But once their nerves kind of settled, we got some really good cooking. I'm quite looking forward to a trip to darkest Peru. It's lovely. Hold on a minute. It's one of those chefs, my mum, fish, chips and beans. <laughs> That sounds like my tea it's your mom, from babe. 1983. <laughs> Joining Tom in the judging hot seats are Nisha Katona and Ed Gamble. Nisha is one of Britain's most successful restaurateurs with her street food chain, Mowgli. My view, London is the world's kitchen. So I'm looking for really bold and arresting flavours and that bravery. And someone who needs arresting for crimes against comedy is Ed, a hugely popular food podcast host. <laughs> Very excited. I'm from London, of course. That's where I really fell in love with animation and illustration. So lovely to see some of my favourites represented here. Pugwash, Poe. Nice that there's a Mr Bean dish as well. Big fan of Mr Bean, huge fan. Hello. Good morning. How are we? Morning, Tom. Very good. Big smiles. Why is that? I'm hoping there's going to be some really, really good food. It's London. And if it's happening in the world, it's happening in the southeast and London. So I'm looking for some really exciting flavours. And I'm excited because I'm a London boy, a proper Cockney. Yes. Well, I'm excited because I also competed for London and South East. Tom found a loophole when he's a GBM. Because he's not from London. And he doesn't really cook in London. London and the South East. Marlowe is in the South East. Even though Somerset. my accent is not. Abby, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, you? Yeah, good, man. Good. Hello, my loves. How are you hey, getting hey. on? Yeah, good, good, good. good. All right, well, the judges are starting to assemble and we've got our fantastic guest judge today who is from London. He's an extraordinary illustrator and author, so you really have to make sure you're getting those stories onto the plate, all right? Yeah. I love both of your canapes. Tommy loved both of your canapes. I hope that these judges do, too. The guest judge helping to score the dishes today was Illustrator of the Year in 2022. He's illustrated 12 books, including the acclaimed Look Up, and authored two, one of them an award-winning anthology of stories called Joyful Joyful. He's passionate about creating characters who challenge race and gender stereotypes. It's Dapo Adeola. Hello. Hi, Dapo. Hi. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take a seat, Hello, please. Dapo. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're going to eat loads of food. Are you up for that? Yeah. <laughs> Are you a foodie, Dapo? I think I am, like, but I'm a creature of habit, so like, I tend to just eat what I like, and every so often I come across a new dish and I just add it to the list. And you live in London? I do, yes. So all different styles, cultural backgrounds, there's so many different spaces to eat. What kind of things do you like, Dapo? Huge fan of African dishes, Nigerian food especially, because I am Nigerian. I love Caribbean food as well, and Chinese and Japanese food as well, fusion dishes. So you like spice and a bit of heat and all of that? All or... the good stuff. All the good stuff, <laughs> right. Good stuff. <laughs> Two minutes, gentlemen. Great. They look lovely, Avi. Are you happy? I'm very happy with them. The right size as well. Slightly big last time. Avi garnishes with deep-fried curry leaves, whilst Robbie adds puff pastry and lovage emulsion to the scallops. Last minute, please. Yeah. The scallop mill foy is garnished with apple blossom and the mangalore buns are finished off with a sprinkle of grated bataga. How are you doing, Robbie? I'm, like, 30 seconds away. I'm going to be one minute. OK. You are due at the pass, gentlemen. This is for Tom. Service, please. Here we go. Thank you. First up, Robbie's scallop mill foy with a confit celeriac version for Tom. Very nice. Yeah. Nice and fresh. Flavour's not quite punchy enough, mm -hmm. but actually, textually, I thought it was mm. great. I quite like that delicate flavour. And I like, the, I like the crunch of the apple and the crumbly pastry. Oh, it was delicious. Then it's on to Avi's Mangalore buns with a crab sucker and another celeriac alternative. Give it a go. That's delicious. Some spice on that. Mm. Got that lovely curry leaf that's deep fried on the top, mm. so you've got that really haunting fragrance that persists 
and that acidity works so well with Solera. And the grated Batago, I, I love Batago. Yeah. I can taste the acidity that Tom mentioned as well, and it's not overwhelming. Like, it's just nice. And that other one was very, very fresh mm. as well. So now what we do is we hold up the plate that we like the most. Both very good. I mean, I haven't finished this one, but that's no sign that I don't like mm -hmm. it the most. There you, there you go. go. It's straight onto the starters, and Robbie is serving first. He fills samosas with a spiced carrot mixture, ready to fry later. We're good. So the first starter is called Fancy a Little Smackerel, a braised and glazed carrot with a carrot samosa and a carrot and coriander cornetto. And it's inspired by E. H. Shepard's illustrations in A.A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh particularly the vegetables in Rabbit's Garden and the Hundred Acre Wood. Robbie scored a disappointing six for his plant-based starter after failing to impress veteran Tommy Banks. Your hay-baked carrot was a little underwhelming. Yeah, it didn't quite hit the mark, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to braise it in carrot juice and a load of aromats, and I'm going to use the braising liquor to make a glaze and just ramp up the flavour, so it's got a nice sheen around the outside. More carroty carrotness. Exactly. Are you making any other changes to the plate? Yeah, so I've parked the uh, lollipop, so I'm going to go with the uh, cornetto instead, so it'll be a nice kind of palate cleanser That's at the end. That's a really nice idea. Hoping this new addition will hit the spot in the judging chamber, Robbie shapes and bakes his cornetto cones and churns carrot-flavoured sugar syrup to make sorbet. Carrots are good to go. I'm just going to torch them now, I'm going to glaze them, and then I'm happy. They're looking better and they're more vibrant. We love your work. It's so different, so groundbreaking and important. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What brought you into illustrating in, in the first place? I didn't really see myself doing it as a career, but luckily enough, a friend of mine, Nathan, um, is the author of our book, Look Up. He saw something that I didn't in terms of the potential for my work and came up with a great story and I illustrated it and here we are. Did you go to art college at the beginning I and then didn't. move, or was it no, just... No, I'm self-taught. I did study graphic design in university, but it wasn't what I wanted to do at all. After the course, I started to teach myself how to become an illustrator, and roughly about 10 years later, I got published. People always go with things like, oh, overnight success, they came out of nowhere, and you're like, no, a decade. Yeah. 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 Been here a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have four minutes, Robbie. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, I'm all right. Robbie plates the carrots and adds beads of carrot puree before sprinkling puffed barley and pickled baby onion petals. You got your lollipops today? No, I'm doing a cornetto today. How are they, nice and crisp? Yeah, lovely and crispy. You've got one minute, Robbie. Yeah. I think you might be a minute over, perhaps. Possibly, you yeah. Just get it right. Yeah. Robbie garnishes with salad burnet, a type of leaf, while the final few samosas are fried. They get nice and crispy. And plated. So, Robbie, you are due now. Yep. The dish is dressed with chive oil and carrot sorbet fills the crispy cones. Beautiful, Robbie. Looks gorgeous. OK. Service, please. Thank you. Brilliant. Great presentation. I think we need to go for the cornetto first. I actually don't mind the samosa. It's not a bad pastry. It's got a nice flavorful filling. The filling is delicious in the samosa. Then you get to the carrot, and I just feel it's a little bit one dimensional. And I nearly broke my teeth on it. Is that puffed rice? The carrot itself, I, I really liked. But the puffed barley is a real issue. The carrot was, it wasn't too crunchy, it wasn't too soft, it was perfect. The biggest flaw in this dish for me is it's just a bit cold. It's just not a warming start mm. for me. I struggled with the cornetto. It's a bit too sweet. There's a natural sweetness in carrots. I haven't got a problem with the cornetto. I think the flavour is, is lovely. I mean, they're sweet, Tom, but that's surely got added sweetness to it. I like the idea of the theme, the carrot and rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, but I'm not sure it's been quite realised in the, in the presentation. No. For his starter, Avi is making a mint chutney by blending fresh mint with chilies, ginger and lemon juice. Yeah, it's good. Just trying to cruise through all my prep. 
So this is scrambled snake by the lake and it's papri chaat, delicious pumpkin, mint and tamarind chutneys, chakli, coconut yogurt, fresh tomato and pomegranate seeds. And this is inspired by the Gruffalo, which is by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. You got an eight for this dish? Yes. It's a good score. It's a good score, not good enough. You'd like more? Yes. Of course you'd like more, Avi. Tommy was looking for a few more zingy flavours from vegetables. He wanted a burst of that flavour of pomegranate every time he took a bite. He also wanted a few more pumpkins in there, which right. I'm going to add. Are you giving them extras to play with themselves or are you just going to put it straight onto the plate? I think I'm just going to put it on the plate because I don't want them to imbalance the dish. Right. Keep control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> To make the snake from the title of his dish, Avi puts spiced dough into a wooden press and deep fries. Chakli is something that you would have with your tea. They're deep fried gram flour, crunchy worlds, basically, slightly spiced. And what a brilliant theme, though, the Gruffalo. Fantastic it? book, yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant book. Where are you meeting him down by the lake? And his favourite dish is scrambled snake. The I thing, know the thing is, him. You're a very interesting person, Nisha, because you quite often don't remember what we do here when it's happening, <laughs> but you remember bits of the Gruffalo off by her. I think that's a long-term memory yeah. issue that I don't have. <laughs> Abby, you've got six minutes to go. How's it going? Yeah, really good, thank you, Andy. I should be there on time. He crumbles papri chat crackers, tops with plant-based yoghurt and tamarind chutney for a sweet and sour edge. Three minutes, Avi. Yep. Mint chutney, cooked beetroot, tomato and pomegranate are next. Do you reckon this is a better version than earlier on in the week? Yeah. I'm just upping the quantity of the uh, tomatoes yep. and more pumpkin and more beetroots. So it was a good feedback. thought I should take it on board. A garnish of coriander and wood sorrel. Let's get the snakes on there. Service, please. It's amazing. It's so delicious. This is like a, a rainbow of flavours and textures. It's so vibrant, it's so alive. It's great. It's a, it's a really tasty bit of cooking, that. I love it. So you like it, yeah? Wow. <laughs> it makes me smile inside. It looks all soft and mushy, like guacamole almost. Um, and then it's just got this nice crunch to it. It's nice sweetness as well. It did just look like a bowl of guacamole, and yet within it are a million flavours and a million textures and such excitement, you know, for, for the palate. It's just fantastic. This is what plant-based cookery should be about, right? It's not trying to do an impression of meat. It's its own thing, and it's using the ingredients perfectly. Presentation, the board, I mean, it feels very all to me. Has it got a connection to the Gruffalo, kind of? So knowing what I know about Axel's colour palette, this is it. Right, interesting. Yeah, the greens, the browns, even mm -hmm. the oranges. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe for some people at a banquet situation, you need to be a bit more on the nose. More to... obvious. Yeah. yeah. Cracking on with his fish course, Robbie scores his bass and places in a lemon and peppercorn brine. Beautiful. So it's the first fish dish now, and it's called fish meal. And it's wild sea bass, apple dashi, fermented fennel ravioli, apple and Exmoor caviar salad. And it's inspired by Captain Pugwash and the episode Fish Meal, where he was swallowed by a giant fish along with another pirate, and they fight it out to claim the treasure. <laughs> Captain Pugwash. Love Captain Pugwash. Robbie trims the tail off the fish to use as a base for the fish mousse, which will be the filling for his raviolo. The seaweed cracker failed to impress during the week, but thinking on his feet, he's found a way of keeping those flavours on the plate. I've just cut up some chives to go through my ravioli filling. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon zest and then some seaweed for it as well. Tommy felt there wasn't enough flavour. I thought it was important to keep that element on the dish. I'm just going to up the flavour profiles. <laughs> Did it, 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 did it,
It was that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he have some interesting characters? There's some uh, urban uh, myths that surround the names of the Captain yes, Pogwash right. characters. But, but they're, they're actually, they actually are not called that. There was a rumour went around that the character was called that and now everyone's remembered that the characters were called that. There were two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you should rewrite it with those characters yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a seven for this one, Robbie. Yes, I think there's room for a few more points in that dish. Yeah. So a couple of tweaks and hopefully I'm going to get it there. What's your biggest worry, getting that fish right? Getting the fish right, yeah. I slightly overcooked it. Um, so just that's, that's the key part of the dish, isn't it? It's yeah. a fish meal, so it needs to be bang on. Yeah. Uh, if I, be, I think if I can nail that, right. then we're on to a winner. Wonderful, Robbie. I hope this one works out really well for you. Me too. The pasta, coloured using cuttlefish ink, is filled with the mousse. I'll be there in a minute to give you a hand if you need anything. My God. Fermented fennel is plated alongside sea purslane. OK, Robert, you've got three minutes, my Ooh. dear. OK. It's going to be a little over. Yeah, I'm going to be over. The ravioli is blanched. Robbie starts cooking the sea bass, but having overcooked it in the week, he'll need to keep a close eye on it to avoid making the same mistake. One minute, then you'll be due at the pass, Robbie. I'm going to need another two minutes, please. Avi finishes off the salad with apple pearls. Do you want me to put some of the caviar on top? Yes, please. And the bass and ravioli are plated. Happy with your ravioli this time? Yeah, I think I'm much happier, to be honest with you, mate. OK, you're two minutes over, Robbie. Wait. It's served with apple dashi alongside. Dashi looks great. You happy? Yeah, ready to go. Great, send it. Service, please. Mine appears to be on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that is nuts. I feel like I'm in a theme park. That too. is so ace, isn't it? Has anybody eaten a piece of that fennel yet? Mm. That is so overpoweringly strong. It, it's yeah. actually quite offensive. Mm. I got a bit of the fish before I got the fennel. Let the fennel. Mm. Attack my mouth. And the fish is lovely. <laughs> the dash is tasty. The dash is really tasty. Sort of the same issue with this salad. I quite like the the apple in it, and I like the caviar, obviously. But the leaves are just sort of dumped in there a bit. If you get a, a spoon of it all together, the flavours actually combine really nicely. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the dish itself. The fish is okay. The sauce, I think, is delicious. But then you're avoiding the fennel, and that's not really okay. Fish was tasty, fennel was a kick in the teeth. The ravioli was nice as well, but it was just kind of plain. The ravioli, for me, is one of the disappointing things. The pasta is great, it's got that cuttlefish ink that's gone through it, but then actually when you eat it, the middle of it's really bland, there's nothing going on. And, and it's a shame because the box came, you opened it, and it was exciting, and it, mm -hmm. it felt that we're really into that brief, but then the dish just... Nothing is tying in yeah. very well. So as a pirate, Tom, you, you don't approve? As a pirate, this is not pirate-worthy. Mm. For his fish course, Avi has made a significant change to his sea bass. I'm just taking off the skin because, you know, once it's steamed, the feedback I got from Tommy was it was a bit soggy for him, and I thought I should take that feedback on board. So the next dish is fish, chips and beans. So it's a sea bass steamed in the banana leaf with Jerusalem artichoke and potato shoestring chips, chickpea and fennel salad, all served with sol caddy. Inspired by the animated Mr Bean series, specifically the episode where Mr Bean has his chippy tea. I'm a bit worried about Mr. Bean connected with food, because it doesn't normally go well for Mr. Bean when there's food involved, no, does it? No, it's my favourite well. episode of Mr. Bean is his steak tartar one, when he orders that and then he has to hide it in the plant mm. pot. <laughs> So we can see where the fish and chips are in this, but where are the beans? Is that the chickpea salad, I wonder? I mean, that's the only other place he's got yeah. to put it. Mm. Avi is making a marinade for his fish from fresh coconut, coriander, mint, lemon juice and ginger. It's spooned onto fresh banana leaves and topped with bass fillets. So the banana leaf uh, should have been softened before I put the fish on top. It should have gone in the oven, uh, so it's a bit more pliable. But unfortunately, I forgot to do that. 
In a rushed attempt to get around his mistake, Avi blowtorches the edges of the leaves to soften them. This was your lowest scoring dish. Yes. You got a six for this. What were the issues that you had? So the beans element wasn't really coming through in the salad. Beans were getting lost. Right. So I decided to change the whole element of the mung beans to black chickpeas. Oh, which nice. Which also I'm a huge like fan Kala of. Like Yes, that's it. Lovely. The chickpeas with the skins on, that's the yes. only difference. I really like it in a salad because it's got a really nice bite to it. I love this new addition. Thank you. So you're hoping to get more marks for yes, this? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, I've done enough. Avi will have to hope the judges agree. He cooks the chickpeas with mustard seeds and curry leaves. Potatoes and Jerusalem artichokes are deep fried for the crisps. Next, it's on to the sol kadi, a traditional Indian savoury digestive drink which veteran Tommy Banks thought too salty. Cook and vinegar is quite salty on its own, so I've reduced the quantity, but it still keeps its colour and intensity. So I've added a little bit more coconut uh, milk and yoghurt to it. So, Dapper, the first book that you had published was Look Up, wasn't it? Oh, we've got it here, actually. Is it not? I just want to make sure. Technically, you're right. The first book I had published in the UK was Look Up. Um, I had another book published in America, um, which was called The Last Last Day of Summer, written by Lamar Giles. But uh, Look Up was the book that pretty much got me into the industry. Because the main character here is a young black female. Yeah, it wasn't something that was depicted that much, especially in STEM surrounding space. We really struck it lucky with um, Look Up. We were just making a book, um, and for me, I was just trying to come up with a fun character. She's based on one of my nieces. I'm not supposed to say this, but she's my favorite she's niece. So <laughs> <laughs> she's so favorite cool. niece. <laughs> yeah. Avi still isn't happy with his banana leaf parcels, so he starts again. I just thought, I've got the time. I may as well just do them. And I don't want to take any chances. In a change to his presentation, the sole kadi is served in shot glasses and garnished with fresh coriander. Fresh lemon and green marinade are plated, followed by chopped fennel and chickpeas to finish off the new salad. Avi, you have four minutes to the pass. You happy with the changes that you made, Avi? Yeah, really happy. It looks slightly simpler, but it's got much more flavour to the salad. I see you've added a lemon wedge, Av. Yeah, it's a massive change on my dish. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought uh, it's nice if someone wants a little bit more acidity on their fish. You've got two minutes. Yeah. How's your fish looking, Avi? It's very nicely cooked this time. Right. I've cooked it only for five minutes. It smells incredible, mate. The bass is topped with crispy potato and Jerusalem artichoke chips. I'm going to put some mint on this as well. That's the last thing. Each plate is served alongside Mr Bean's iconic red tie and his beloved teddy bear. Bang on time, Avi. Well done. Thank you. Uh, service, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Hey, it's Teddy. You're getting right I'm into putting it, these aren't on. You? I'll tell you what, this is my kind of tie to put on. <laughs> the only one I know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> you wear the hat the other way, you're completely freaking me out. <laughs> Look at you. No, I like it this way. <laughs> I went straight for the fennel salad. Mm. You know, like, if you're worried about something, you've just got to face your fears head on. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. Very yeah. nice. Mm. I mean, you could be on a kind of go and beat shack, couldn't you? These are really South Indian flavours. Lots of coconut. I think it's a personal thing, but... I don't really like the salt caddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. It's just not for my palate, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think it's my palate, and I think it's a cognitive dissonance when I see that. Sweet. You're expecting sweet, right? Yeah, yeah it messes and then you it was up. like, whoa. Yeah. It looks like I'm a strawberry milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the dish itself is yeah. absolutely fantastic. The soft fish and the delicate spice and then the, the chips on top. And I love the, you know exactly what the dish is themed on. I love the hat with, with the teddy wearing the hat as well. I think that's, that's a really lovely touch. Mm. The chips aren't chipping for me. Like, they're not, mm. you know, my chips, they're a bit more solid than this. Tom's not sure. I don't know. I think it's delicious. My fish is slightly overcooked. 
It's a shame, Tom, because mine's cooked perfectly, but that just shows a bit of inconsistency. And the dressing on the fish for me is perhaps... It's a little acidic. It's a little yeah. over-punchy. I mean, part of the problem is that I... One of the first things I did is put some lemon on it. Oh, Lord. So, yeah. But mm. then, don't serve me the lemon. It yeah, doesn't yeah, need it. That's a good point. OK, so have I then over-seasoned it because you've given me the lemon? Mm. Maybe that's the Mr Bean mistake. Yeah. <laughs> You remember the episode of Mr. Bean where he put the lemon on the fish and it didn't need it? Oh, we all laughed, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm getting a heads up on what the judges think of our London and South East chefs so far. Hello, lovely people. Hi, Andy. Hi, right, mate. How are you, Dapo? I'm fine, thank you, Andy. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. How are you, sir? All right. I've had some things that have been offensively bad and then bland and then, no. Oh. Did you have a starter that you really liked? And then I've had a starter that I've loved. I think everything that's come out has got a, a, a certain degree of uh, accomplishment about it, you oh, know, good. and we, we're not getting those dishes where it kind of is disjointed and making no sense and an anxiety. Which does on a happen plate. sometimes, yeah. They are bold. What are you looking for in terms of in, in storytelling? You want something arresting? Well, that was the chest, because like, right. you're like, what's in it, you know? And also with the theme with Pugwash and all that, you know, treasure chest, perfect. Yeah. With the Gruffalo dish, mm -hmm. the snake, I thought the presentation was brilliant because it it was very much in keeping with the colour scheme from the book yes. itself. The other judges didn't really think it was hitting the nail on the head. And sometimes with illustration, you're not supposed to hit the nail on the head. Less is more, if right. that makes any sense. It's time for the main course. Whilst Robbie grates purple beetroot for his quinoa croquettes, Avi is making a sauce by reducing masala wine and stock. Well, I've just been in the judges' chamber. They really appreciate all the hard work and effort that's going into delivering all of these dishes. How are your energy levels? Uh, took a bit of a dip after the fish course just because it was such a push, but yeah. they're back up now because yeah, they're going into the main course. Yeah, because this is the big course. push. Yes. Yep. Avi tosses Girol mushrooms in butter, garlic and thyme, and chestnuts are simmered in masala wine to accompany his main. OK, the first main course of the day, and it's called What's a Squab? And it's roasted squab pigeon with masala sauce, crispy pancetta, chestnuts, roasted delicia pumpkin, sage and quince jelly. And it's inspired by Burke's Squab Farm in Wes Anderson's animated film, Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's actually one of my favorite Roald Dahl books, but it's also one of my favorite animated movies as well. It's brilliant. Have any of you seen it? Yes. Yeah. Stop motion Fabulous. film. Fantastic. Yeah. George Clooney's Mr. Yeah. Fox. You got an eight for this. Yeah. First two courses, you're reaching into your heritage. This is reaching into your training. Yes. Very what was Tommy's feedback? The skin wasn't crispy enough, and maybe the leg could have done with a bit more cooking. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's a gorgeous dish. Yeah. It's so simple. I have to make sure every element cooks perfectly. Yeah. Delicia pumpkin is seasoned with sage, whilst another earthy aromatic spice, stone flour, has been delivered to the judging chamber. What's the smell? This is fabulous. If I'm not mistaken, this is stone flour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you well-educated mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. it's like, it I know my great, smells. great, though, doesn't it? It's what is a smell. squab? It's a farmed pigeon. Oh, not a Not a, from one of the, the Trafalgar Square rats with wings. Should be lovely, plump breast, roasted beautifully, nice and pink, good fat covering, super tasty. That's a sexy Should pigeon. Should be. Yeah. yeah, it's a sexy pigeon. Like it. Avi fries pancetta to add a salty texture to the dish. The sage and thyme stuffed squabs are lightly browned before being roasted. So I've poached the pigeon legs in the marsala sauce so they cook a little bit more and almost confit, but not in oil in the sauce itself. I'm hoping for it to be really tender. Four minutes, Avi, OK, yep. love? Yeah. Bobby, can you pour that sauce into the jugs, please? Wait. How's the crown on that squad? Yeah, it's beautiful. Very happy with it. it smells incredible. You've got two minutes, Avi. Yeah. This is the first time I've seen Avi really pushed at the pass. Judging day has a way of doing that to chefs. Next to his squab, Avi plates the pumpkin and girole. You're due now, Avi. Yeah. Quince cheese, crispy pancetta and sage are added. Gorgeous. 
and fantastic Mr Fox Closhes finish it off. Service, please. Thank you. I need to take it off. Oh, yeah, thanks. I love that. I love the music. I love the smell. I love the look of this. Hey. To me, so far, the presentation's on point. He's absolutely nailed it. What do you reckon, Ed? It's a tasty dish. It's some classic, classic flavours. I love the the, the squash on there and the crispy sage leaves. The pigeons cook nicely. It doesn't blow me away. The squash is delicious. I love the, the flavours. Um, mm. I love the gravy as well. The mushrooms are lovely. Everything else is nice, but I'm not a fan of pigeon. It's a wonderful autumnal dish. Pigeon is beautifully cooked. The flavours are great, the crunch and the texture. But overall, if you take that away, we've got here a fantastic pigeon dish that you could get in any top-end restaurant. It needs something else. It needs to have that, that wow factor, which it doesn't necessarily have. The squash have. is beautiful, though. Oh, it's so yeah. good. But it's just not right for a banquet. Mm -hmm. What we've got is some really well-cooked elements bound together by a very nice sauce, but that's it. I think we could have had some more things that transport us to fox-based things, maybe a recording <laughs> of some high-pitched mating squeals or something. <laughs> I knew that was where it's going. <laughs> Robbie's next and retrieves the slow-cooked short rib for his main from the water bath. Veteran Tommy scored the dish a disappointing six earlier in the week, so he needs to up his game today. So, Robbie, main courses, how are you feeling? I'm really excited about this one. I didn't get a great score for it. Made some uh, rookie mistakes yeah. when I was uh, finishing my dish, so I'm trying to eradicate all of those. Yeah. This is Darkest Peru. Peruvian spice sirloin of beef, short ribbon marmalade sandwich, beef dripping roasted golden beetroot, amarillo pepper, quinoa and beetroot croquettes, and ari verde sauce, which is inspired by Paddington Bear and his Peruvian origins. So let's talk about that beef. Have you changed your methodology? Yes, so I'm gonna cook it completely on the barbecue. Tommy was absolutely right, the texture wasn't right. The smoky flavour didn't permeate it, so... Get that bark yes, around yes. the outside. So what about that sandwich? We were all a bit sad about the sandwich because we were very excited about it and very looking forward to it, and it kind of fell apart a bit. Yeah, most importantly, I need to get my pan up to temperature. And so getting that temperature just right so it's golden. Exactly. If I can get that right, I think you'll love it. So far, so good. You can see the link to the brief straight away just by reading it, the Peruvian ingredients and the marmalade sandwich. Also yes. very on trend, Southern American cookery, yeah. and spicing is, is bang on, isn't mm -hmm. it? Also, anything that just has beef dripping in the title. Yeah. It's very brave, isn't it, to do for a main course a sandwich. I was thinking that. I was like, is it I just going to be a sandwich it. with, like, a rib sticking out? <laughs> This is my short rib that I've been braising with salt, pepper, a little bit of marmalade. I finished it off with shallots, some veal jus, a little bit of thyme, uh, cooked it out, taken it off the bone, I flaked it down. Now I'm just going to press it between two trays. While the mixture sets, Robbie shapes and panes quinoa croquettes. Tommy's feedback in the week was that the marmalade flavour in the sandwiches was too subtle. I'm just buttering my bread with marmalade, slathering a lot more on this time to make sure that the flavour is more prominent. The sandwiches are assembled, ready to be fried later. <laughs> to create his Peruvian ají verde sauce, Robbie mixes mustard, egg yolks, lime juice and oil before adding herbs. Golden beetroot spirals are cooked in beef dripping. And following Tommy's advice, the beef sirloin is barbecued. Robbie, how are you doing? How's that sandwich today? No dramas with the pan? No dramas with the pan so far, my man. Famous last words, though, right? Having fallen apart earlier in the week, this time round, Robbie has decided to dry fry the sandwiches in a hot pan first and then cook them in butter for a crispier finish. I'm much happier with my sandwiches. 
My beetroots are beautiful. My beef has come off the barbecue. I'm just going to finish it in the oven just to make sure it's cooked through beautifully. Robbie deep fries his croquettes and serves the ahi verde sauce. You've got four minutes, Robbie. Yeah. Before topping his sandwiches with marmalade gel. Seems to be in a much better place. I am indeed. They are garnished with Peruvian marigold. Okay, it's coming up to the pass, mind your back. Lovely. And plated. Got a nice bark around the outside. See what we're dealing with on the inside. Is that the doneness you'd like it? Yeah, looks beautiful. Could do with a little longer rest, but the colour's perfect. The sirloin is plated alongside golden beetroot. You're due on the pass now. Yep. Followed by Amarillo pepper crisps. Let's go. Yep. Service, please. <laughs> OK. Another bucket hat. <laughs> mm, it's less padding to more festival when you wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, that is the sort of bread-to-filling ratio I like in a sandwich. Mm -hmm. The sandwich is fabulous. So that bread that's been fried, the meat, the sweetness from the marmalade, absolutely everything you would want. I think the beef is fabulous. I really love this sauce as well. Yeah. I'm struggling a little bit with the croquette. I think the croquette needs the sauce. It's just a bit dry. There's nothing to the croquette. Yeah. It's, it's completely tasteless. Yeah. It's funny because every other element is really mm -hmm. punchy in flavour. Then all of a sudden you get to the croquette, and it is pretty flavourless unless you dip it in the sauce. My thing is, I've never had marmalade out of context. It's always in a sandwich, part of a breakfast, but to have it like this is new to me, and it definitely works with the beef, everything just, like, it gives it that nice little zing. I love the way it's been presented, and I love the link to the brief in, in the ingredients themselves. The cooking on the beef is beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. It's not too rare. It's close to medium, and I like that. In terms of, like, is it something for a banquet, I kind of think, is it grand enough? Mm. Mm. That's the thing. Mm. Like, but I, I like it. It's on to the sweet part of the menu and the pre-desserts. Avi makes pomegranate passion fruit and chervil sugar syrups for his shaved ice palate cleanser, entitled Colourful Snowman, inspired by the animation of Raymond Briggs's The Snowman. Robbie works on his poppy seed tweel, which will be bloom-shaped and topped with edible flowers to represent the children's animation series, Fifi and the Flower Tots. Two minutes for the pre-desserts, gentlemen. How are you getting on? Yeah, yeah good, thank good. you. How are your tweels coming along there, Robbie? Everything Lovely, right? yeah, they're bang on. Just need to get my fennel meringue into the bowls. And how is the meringue? I hope it's frozen. It's been in okay. there for about oh, 15 gosh. minutes. Hoping and frozen, two words that strike fear into my heart in this kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you are actually due on the pass now. Yeah, no worries. I'm uh, ready when you are. How's your meringue? Sorted? Yes. Avi bottles the colourful sugar syrups, ready for the judges to pour themselves. And Robbie's gooseberry curd is topped with meringue and the flour tweel. Wait. Let's go. Service, please. Thank you. Cheers. Avi's shaved ice with flavoured sugar syrups is first. Here, Tom, you, you have a go with that. That was cool. That was very like cool. Like a Western. Thank you, cowboy. Mm. I love that Sherville syrup. I think it's absolutely fabulous. It's the passion fruit is coming through for me. Really? It's super tasty. Mm. It's really sweet, but it's really refreshing and clean. Mm. And I just think, what a great idea. Really, really clever. Yeah. I can't believe that I've been bowled over by a bowl of shaved ice. <laughs> it's a pre-dessert. It's sort of perfect it, it, for it. It is. Next, Robbie's poppy seed tweel with edible flowers. More fennel, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, your face is my face. It doesn't... It's not here. What's upset you about this, Tom? I think it's the gooseberries. I like the gooseberries. Oh, they're sharp. I think the sweetness of that tweel balances out how sharp those gooseberries are. It certainly did not warrant a screwed-up little baby face, Tom. A hundred percent did. 
the Tweel is too sweet. It's so far at one spectrum of sweetness, and the gooseberries are so far at the other. There is, there's no way that it can be harmonious. Well, this, this is my favourite. Yeah, yeah I think just hold on. This is my yeah. favourite. Hold up your favourite. Which one your favourite? <laughs> Definitely the shave that. Cheers. Mm, Cheers. Cheers. How are you doing, Robbie? The last stretch. Yeah, final push. Feeling good about it, Av? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. For his final course of the day, Avi makes a batter for his flourless chocolate cake. This is Planet of the Clangers. Coconut rice pudding planets, chocolate cake, pistachio praline and chocolate shards. Do you remember the clangers? They went... <laughs> Something like that. It was like a penny whistle. Yeah, with like... yeah. Am I wrong? No, I don't no, think you no, are wrong. I don't think you are. But, but also, you know you look absolutely insane <laughs> right now. Yeah. How much did you score for this, Abby? Ten. Ten! This is a wonderful dish. I'm assuming you're not making any changes. No changes to this one. Just, Just need to get it right. it right again. I wish you lots of luck. Thank you, Let's Andy. get it. Avi is filling balloons with the coconut rice pudding before carefully flash freezing in liquid nitrogen to create a hard shell for his planet. it would be interesting to see how they get a coconut rice pudding planet together. I'm quite excited to see that. How are we feeling about rice pudding? I'm not a fan, Love. I'll be honest. Like, it's just... These are all childhood trauma things. <laughs> 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 like, big fan of rice pudding, big yeah. fan of chocolate cake. Yeah. Pistachio <laughs> praline sounds pretty good. I think that's going to make up for it. And the chocolate shards. I think the coconut rice pudding is going to be yeah. nice. I think I think you'll be surprised. Chocolate cake is served adorned with tempered chocolate shards, coated in rose petals and gold leaf. Five minutes, Avi. Yeah. How are those planets? I think they're coming along fine. I just okay. have to make sure I get them out with, in one piece. Really, seems to be a bit of a problem. Rice pudding planets, now free of their moulds, are plated. Looks incredible. You happy now, the way they've turned out, Av? Yeah, really happy. I think by the time they get to the pass, they'll be hopefully the perfect texture I'm looking for. Yeah. Is it just your praline on the finish? Praline and rose petals. <laughs> oh, look at that. Service, please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you got your wish. Well, 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 now we can see if your impression was any good. <laughs> oh, my God! That's amazing! <laughs> You've broken yours, Tommy, love. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that rice pudding? Awesome. Amazing! Seriously. I didn't know rice pudding could be this smooth. You know, it's kept its form as well. Yep. And so the outside is slightly more congealed and, and it's got a lovely chew to it. Flavour is fabulous. Mm. And the cake complements it very well because it's not too rich. I mean, it's almost a mousse, really, isn't mm. it? The cake is just... Mm. There's a skill set in this that's great. There's pastry technique that's really, really good. I, I think it's amazing. And actually, I think the chocolate cake's great. But my only problem is, I think I've got two desserts, but they don't necessarily tie together. If you eat the chocolate cake, it's powerful, it's thick, yeah. it's heavy, and it's very, very dark. And then you go back to the rice pudding and you can't taste anything. You put so them together the... and they are phenomenal. They're not. The I think they are. chocolate overpowers it. I think this is bank... <laughs> <laughs> I, think... <laughs> I think this is completely bang... <laughs> banquet-worthy. This is not banquet-worthy yet. Can you not yet? agree with yet. him? It's like we've walked around a buffet, and an amazing buffet in a beautiful hotel, and gone, that pudding is incredible, and that pudding is incredible. I'm going to put them both on my plate. I love and a that buffet. Is what, yeah, I know you love a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> They're both brilliant. <laughs> the... That was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it's the final dish of the day, and Robbie is whipping up a romantic chocolate delight dedicated to his wife. Pushing now, it's the final furlong. So this next dessert is my queen of hearts. It's a heart-shaped cherry and chocolate layered gâteau with cherry gel, tempered white chocolate served with a cherry sour cocktail. And it's inspired by John Tenniel's illustrations of Alice in Wonderland. 
Robbie previously scored an eight for his dessert, his highest score of the week, but he's making some changes to try and snag that elusive 10. Tommy's feedback was that the cherry centre was just a little bit too cold, and I completely agreed. Yeah. Just need to get it out of the blast chiller and sprayed with enough time. To let it come up to temperature. Tommy had other advice for you, though, didn't he? He suggested another component part. Yeah, so I've added a little bit of Kirsch into my cherry gel into the centre, just to give it more of that Black Forest Gatto kind of feel right. to it. Robbie's Gatto comprises layers of chocolate mousse, cherry gel, chocolate cake and foyotine. And we're away. Black Forest Gatto, one of the most classic desserts around. Yeah. Chocolate and cherry. Mm -hmm. You get that right, it's magic. And then cherry gel and tempering of chocolate. There's a few areas here where we can see some real sort of skill. I'm trying to envision what the Alice in Wonderland inspiration is going to look like in terms of the presentation. Yeah, this is a real opportunity for good presentation, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 30, 31 right now. It's about late. You're trying to keep it really thin or...? Yeah, as thin as possible, mate. Yeah, just make, like, an edible playing card. Nice. The moulds come out of the freezer, but Robbie is struggling. Let's go back in then with them. Right. right, I'm going to be over time. My mousses haven't quite frozen yet in the blast chiller, so yeah. I'm going to give them another five minutes. While he waits for the chocolate hearts to set, Robbie shakes cherry sour cocktails. You all right, Robbie? My chocolate's stuck. Right, they haven't come out. I'm going to have to uh, freeze these and remould them. Try not to let it totally throw you, Robbie. I know it's really hard. Yeah. Robbie cracks on with his white chocolate playing cards. With time already up, he attempts to salvage the broken hearts by shaping them with a cookie cutter. He dips them in white chocolate and covers them with a red velvet spray. They're served alongside the cherry sours and finished with cherry gel. Kind of Herculean effort from Robbie to get something onto the plate he feels he can present to the judges. A little bit heartbreaking. Can you get them cards back out, please? Yep. How long we got? Well, at the moment, you're eight minutes over. OK, coming to the passing, so... All right, my dear. Ready to send? Yes. Uh, let's go. Service, please. OK, no worries. Thank you. This is not at all what I expected. No. Robbie. <laughs> Cheers. Oh. You know, I have seen some of the top chefs that have been through this kitchen yeah. in that position with that blast chiller. So it's like a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. What can you do? What can you do? Mine's are slightly malformed. I honestly, I'm looking at this and I'm going, someone's had a nightmare here. Yeah. I, I actually, without having any clue of what's gone on in that kitchen, I feel a little bit heartbroken. Mm. Nice cherry gel. The outer casing is nice as well, mm -hmm. but I'm not getting the gatto experience that I thought I would be getting. It's kind of split. The fats have gone from whatever the gatto is at the bottom. The shape is all gone. How do you find your drink? It's not the best, but, like, mm. I just like sour tastes, so I could just keep drinking Very that. Very sour. Yeah, there's, but there's no balance in that cocktail mm. at all, is Ooh, there? Oh, no. Such a shame, because there are some really nice flavours within the elements, but... They're lost within the chaos of anxiety that is this dessert. This is the problem where it catches chefs out so many times with desserts. If you've got the foundation of something that needs to be frozen, and if you've not got that initial part of it right, then you're always chasing your tail. It's like one horrible car crash right at the beginning that, that continues and continues and continues, and you can't stop, apart from put something on a plate that you think looks nice and send it out, and then probably break down in tears. So it's been a push all day. 
I've, I've given it my all. Um, didn't end the way I would have liked it to. However, it's been a hell of a ride, man. It's been a hell of a competition. Today was icing on the cake. We can only hope for the best now. Hopefully, we've made London and the South East proud. Right, let's see what the judges have to say now. Let's do good this, luck. Man. Let's do this. You too. Good luck, mate. Thank you. The scores are in. Welcome, chefs. How are you both doing? I'm good, but yeah. exhausted. It's been quite the week. Yeah, well done, guys, getting to the end of the week. And I know from experience how exhausting it is, so you must be pleased to have got to this point. We've had some incredibly beautifully balanced dishes, which is why I need to ask, who cooked scrambled snake by the lake? That was me. What a dish. It was highlight for me. Magical rainbow dish of delights. Nine out of ten, I scored it. It was crispy, it was crunchy, the textures, the flavours, so imbalanced and it was beautiful. It was an amazing bit of cookery. Amazing. Thank you. Who cooked Darkest Peru? Yes. Uh, fantastic dish. Again, there were so many wonderful elements on that. The short rib sandwich, I think, was a highlight of the day for me. There was so much to enjoy in that dish. Well done. Ah, oh, thanks. Listen, as we didn't know, you can tell who cooked which dish. We've given our scores to Andy to add up. So the winner for London and the South East and going through to cook at the national finals is... Avi. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, mate. Exactly. Thank you. Well done, Abby. For me, at least two very, very strong dishes there. As a first-time competitor, incredibly composed cooking. Well done, well done, mate. Thank you. And, Abby, if I can say, I gave you your starter a 10. Oh, your chart you. was incredible, and it just shows that you are a flavour magician. Well, honestly, Robbie, well done. I listen, when it comes to that dessert, I could tell straight away that it was a car crash, it was a nightmare going on. But, honestly, I had exactly the same problem when I competed in Great British Menu. I honestly felt your pain in there. So I'm really sorry, Chief, but <laughs> you got to the judging chambers and well done for the other dish, and the main course was fantastic. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Zappo, it's been lovely having you here. Thank you. Have you had a good time? I've had a great time. Stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely stuffed. I hope you'll join us at the banquet. I'd love to. Please do. Chefs. Thank you for all your heartfelt effort and your endurance in this case, absolutely. Please go take a well-earned rest, put your feet up. Congratulations Thank to you, you, my love. Thank and you. commiserations to you. Thank you. Well done, chefs. Well done, guys. Yes. Did it. I gave my all and I managed to impress the judges. So it's been a long week and I'm, you know, I, it was totally worth it. Really disappointed that I didn't deliver on my dessert. Um, but, you know, it's been a great day. It's been a tiring day. Thoroughly deserved by Avi. He's been strong all week. Yeah, I feel really, uh, you know, amazing. I've come this far. I definitely want to go to the banquet. Well, I don't know about the chefs, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that was a proper roller coaster in there because we've had some great dishes, some lovely flavours, and lots going on. Avi took an early lead with his impressive starter. Robbie scored higher with his much improved main course, but the wheels came off for Robbie with his dessert. From Avi's point of view, I mean, there's a couple of absolutely banging dishes there. Incredibly exciting. Well done, mate. So pleased for you. Congratulations. Thank you. You deserve that. You deserve that. Thank You've been you. consistent all week, man. I really hope that you get a dish to the banquet. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. <laughs>